I up Ravish? This is a re-upload of my Brannigan review because the original one got blocked by the sodding copyright bots. Yes, the International Olympic Committee decided to block the video because I used 9.2 seconds of a clip of Tom Cruise doing a stunt at the Olympics closing ceremony. Now, I included that footage to illustrate the difference between Tom Cruise, a man in his 60s, doing his own stunts, no camera trickery, with John Wayne, a man in his 60s, and what stunts he were doing or weren't doing. Now, this were to provide context for analysis and comment in order to compare and contrast the difference between action movie stars these days and back in the 70s, in accordance with the fair use, fair dealing laws. But no, the International Olympic Committee decided to block it. They wouldn't let me have it. I mean, let's face it. If you're a fan of Tom Cruise, you've already seen that. If you're a fan of the Olympics, you've already seen that. So quite why my 9.2 seconds was so offensive to them, I don't know. If you've been living under a stone and you ain't seen it, then maybe my 9.2 seconds might have teased you enough to go, oh, yeah, I'll have a look at the full thing, which I'd signposted them to. But no, they didn't want that, the bloody International Olympic Committee. No. What a bunch of arseholes. I mean, was that what Baron Pierre de Coubertin had in mind when he restored the Olympics in 1896? I mean, so much for your sodden Olympic spirit. So up yours, International Olympic Committee. Up yours. Get stuffed. Any road is Brannigan. Hey up Ravers, i uh, got another Rayton request for you today from the wonderful Raytons and Ickle Raytons over on Patreon. Now it's the birthday of Sir Richard Attenborough today, so ask the uh, Raytons and Ickle Raytons for suggestions for a related film. And the rotating review randomizer came up with Brannigan. <laughs> Now, I reckon I saw Brannigan about 40 years ago after Match It Day uh, one Saturday night when Denise had gone out. I cannot remember a sodden thing about it, but it stars the Duke, John Wayne, as tough and uncompromising Chicago detective Jim Brannigan. Knock, knock. Now, my first reaction were that wig is working overtime, isn't it, for John Wayne? He ain't at his best here, is he? I looked it up, and it was 68 at this point, so he's stretching it a bit, isn't it? He should have been taking his pension by that point. Not kicking doors in and smacking folk in the face with a two by four. <laughs> anyway, Brannigan is after a criminal called Larkin. Proper wronging, proper nasty piece of work. Blackmailer, extortion, drug dealer, that sort of stuff. And apparently he skipped the country. And he's over in the UK. He's in London. Scotland Yard's got him. London? You've got extradition papers. So Brannigan jets off to London to extradite this Larkin fella. Now he's met at the airport by police officer Jennifer Thatcher. Not Maggie Thatcher. Uh, played by Judy Geeser. She's basically like his chaperone. You know, ferries him around London whenever he wants to go somewhere. But also at the airport, we see this shifty looking fella. And we know he's a wrong un, courtesy of this very subtle ickle bit of music that accompanies him. Strictly pleasure. Now, evidently that bloke were a, a hitman, hired by Larkin's lawyer, Fields, to bump off Brannigan. I told you I wanted that big Irish bastard wasted. It's being taken care of, man. The, the crisps, ain't they, Brannigan's? Brand the crisps. They are, ain't they? Brand of crisps. I don't mind a bag of crisps. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. Now, before Brannigan can get his hands on Larkin, Larkin gets kidnapped by these dodgy-looking geezers, one of whom is James Booth. Now, I don't exactly know where he is here, Larkin, when he gets nabbed, but I feel I need to mention this because it looks like he's in a sauna or a swimming bath or both. But you see there, he just drops his towel, he's bollock naked there. Now, I'm aware that folk do get bollock naked in a sauna. I ain't ever been in a sauna, too hot for me. So I'm aware that you do get bollock naked. But do you get bollock naked when you jump in the pool after? 
Is that acceptable practice? Or was this acceptable back in the 70s? And then when he goes for his massage, he's bollock naked there as well, but they make him put this little gingham tea towel on his buttocks to cover up his modesty. But then the bloke massaging him has got the tiniest towel in the world. He looks like he's wearing an hand towel, that bloke. They're all blooming perverts at the swimming baths. It ain't the sort of swimming baths I go to. That said, I ain't been to swimming baths for years. I used to take the kids on Saturday morning. And then afterwards, they were allowed 20 p's worth of sweeties from the penny chew section in the news agents. Uh, and I'd get me sent a bag of crisps. I don't reckon they do Brannigan's crisps anymore now, do they? Well, they, they were like um, a more substantial crisp, weren't they? Uh, or am I confusing them with McCoy's? Uh, any anyway, road. Uh, yeah, while Larkin's getting nabbed, Brannigan gets to meet Commander Sir Charles Swan and Met Police Bigwig. Played by Dickie Attenborough. Now, evidently, we've got a, a clash of styles here, ain't we? Clash of cultures. With Swan here, he's like your stuffy posh bloke. And Brannigan is your rough and ready yank, isn't he? And Swan ain't happy about him carrying his gun in London. Well, I'm afraid it's placing you in violation of British law and Scotland Yard regulations. Yeah, he don't want London to turn into Wild West. But while they're having their brekkie, Swan gets the bad news that Larkin has been nabbed. So he has to break it to Brannigan, who seems pretty philosophical about it. Well, cheer up. All we can lose is our jobs. Yeah, things ain't so bad, are they? Anyway, the scene is set. Brannigan, with the help of Swanee and the Met Police, has got to track down these kidnappers so he can get out of Larkin and extradite him to the US, all whilst being hounded by this sinister hitman. Right, now, I'm going to do some spoilers. Get the spoiler siren for me, will ya? Right, we'll deal with the hitman man first. This bloke, he is useless. Absolutely useless. After laying some booby traps for Bran again, that he avoids after he susses him out, this hitman man decides to stalk him outside his house and shoot him with a silencer. Now, ignoring the fact that he's mistaken Judy Geeson, for John Wayne. I mean, what sort of a moron does that? Has he got the right spectacles on? Has he got his bifocals on? Or has he just got the wrong ones on? Judy Geeson's, what, five foot three or something like that? And John Wayne's six foot wherever? They'd be better off hiring Mr Magoo. And he he pops the silencer on, but he manages to alert Brannigan to his presence by revving his engine like a tit. So he manages to make a complete and utter balls up of that, the clumsy oaf. And then in the climax of the movie, sees this elite Top Gun hitman resorting to try and run Brannigan over, despite Brannigan shooting at him at point-blank range. It's hardly a fine-tuned precision assassination, is it? I'd have asked for my money back if I were Larkin. What a useless oaf. No, oh, maybe he's still alive. We don't know, do we? Oh, no, no, he's dead. Now, speaking of cars, there were a good car chase in this, as John Wayne nicks a bloke's Ford Capri and chases after James Booth. And maybe it's just because I'm used to watching car chases in American films where they're bouncing around San Francisco in Bullet or something like that. But it seems a lot more dangerous, this one, because I'm watching him driving around a suburb of London with 30 mile an hour signs. So it brings it home a bit. If somebody were driving 50 in a 30 zone where I live, I'd give them around round I can tell you. Mind you, after all that amazing, evasive driving, I'm not quite sure how Brannigan manages to end up on the top of this skate. Not least because he's already driven past the skate. And when we saw James Booth make the jump seconds earlier, there were no skip on that side at road. But when Brannigan makes the jump and then smashes through the barrier, there's the skip. That ain't right, is it? Mind you, that pales into insignificance compared to this bit where James Booth gets shot out of a window. Notice how they do this bit in slow motion, but not this bit. Almost as though they don't want the camera dwelling on that shot for too long. Can't think why. Now, we get quite a few cameos from some very famous faces in this. Far too famous for a what have they been in, because you know them all, any road. Leslie Pants Down turns up as a prostitute. She's in it for a couple of minutes. I think the only purpose she serves is to illustrate how nasty the hitman is. Nice and gentle, love. I'm not kinky. 
You are what you're paid to be. Ooh, nasty piece of work. Now Brannigan bullies this motorcycle courier who's played by a very young Tony Robinson, Baldrick. Get down! Very Baldrick like squeal that, weren't it? You recognise him just from that. And Tony Blair's father in law, Tony Booth, rocks up. Famous for the confession films, of course. Lewd. And the great Brian Glover pops up in it as a, a dodgy geezer. But it's John Wayne's film, he's the main man. Now I've got to confess, ain't a big John Wayne fan. Now I do like some films he's been in, but I think on the whole I just find him a bit like a bit like Clint Eastwood, I find him a little bit wooden. But I thought I did alright in this. They were very likeable. And they weren't the sort of exaggerated John Wayne that I were, I were anticipating. I mean, he's still got the John Wayne swagger. Knock, knock. And delivers some of the lines accordingly. I wouldn't. Unless you want to sing soprano. Now, I think he's intimating that he's going to shoot him in the testicles there. But yeah, he does have to negotiate some action scenes in this. Now, as far as 60-something-year-old action stars go, he ain't Tom Cruise. And none of the stunts he did were anything like what Tom Cruise would do. Absolute nutcase. But, yeah, he gets stuck into the action, gives it a good go. And I tell you where I was got stuck in, and that was Dickie Attenborough. Because at one point, they had this Wild West saloon-style bar fight in a pub. God knows why, but it was good fun. And Dickie, he's chucking rights and lefts with the best of them. Looks like a pig in shit, doesn't he? Although, I feel I must point out, a distinct lack of bar snacks there, isn't there? Very poor selection. Really could do with some Brannigan's crisps. Okie doo, on to Ray's ratings, and uh, as I said, saw this years ago, couldn't remember out about it, but I knew it was one of John Wayne's later films, so uh, I were expecting it to be fairly crap. But still entertaining, so I was expecting a two-star film. Now, I've got to say I enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. There weren't loads of action, but there were a bit of action. Did the plot make sense? Well, it made enough sense to me. Uh, and John Wayne, I thought he did all right for a bloke who was pushing 70. Let's be honest, it were what it were. Weren't going to win any Oscars, this. But, uh, yeah, I were entertained. Enjoyed it. So I'm rating Brannigan a three-star, two-star film. Now, earlier I did mention John Wayne's toupee, but it ain't the only one in this film. So it's time for Wig Watch! Yeah, over recent months we've seen air pieces on the likes of Sean Connery. He's had a very big range. Uh, Shatner, that bloke off uh, Salem's Lot. And your telltale sign is where there's a difference in colour or texture. Notice here, if you look at the back of Shatner's head, you can see there's two different colours there, isn't there? There's a darker brown and a lighter brown, and it just sort of, you can see the join. And this bloke, it looks like he's got a Brillo pad on his head. I don't know why he's bothering. So, how did John Wayne stack up to that? Well, it ain't great. It is a quite clear join there, isn't there? But Mel Ferrer, he had one of them Brillo pad efforts and all. You can clearly see, there's two different colours there, it's different textures, everything. I don't understand why some of these, shall we be generous and say, middle-aged blokes do it. Fair enough, John Wayne, he's the lead. You know, he wants to look virile and have a full head of hair. But this bloke doesn't need a, a wig. He's a lawyer character, he doesn't need to be wearing a wig. Dick Attenborough doesn't bother, does he? He's quite happy to, to grow out gracefully, he doesn't have any vanity in that respect, does he? Don't feel the need to look ridiculous by popping a Brillo pad on his head. Hmm, yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm off to get me sent a bag of crisps. Well, I hope you enjoyed my review of Brannigan Ravers. Uh, and if you did, poke the old like button for me. Give it a good old poke. Uh, or maybe whack it with a two by four, like Brannigan would do. And remember to share our reviews with your mates and subscribe to the channel if you ain't already a subscriber. Very much appreciated. As are all the lovely kind comments you lot keep popping on. Thank you so much for those. And as I said, this was a rating request as selected by the wonderful ratrons and ickle ratrons over on my Patreon. 
So if you wanted to support my channel and also submit your ideas for requests for reviews, then pop on over to my Patreon. Uh, I'll stick a link in the description below. And sign up to become a rating or uh, an equal rating. And your support is hugely appreciated. Massive help. So thank you very much to all my ratings. Now, before I go, I've got a special birthday shout out for Angela. Happy birthday, Angela. Hope you're having a lovely day. And copyright box permitting, I'll be back with another review for you very soon. So I will see you next time. Okie doo.